Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. There's nothing quite like getting lost in a YouTube rabbit hole. There's a bunch of strange, weird, and downright unsettling videos hidden in the dark corners of this site. You check one out, and then another, and before you know it, you've spent a good couple of hours immersing yourself in online horror. For bingers like that, a pair of comfortable, quality earbuds are essential. That's why I've been using my pair of Raycons. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everyone. Their wireless earbuds start at about half the price of other premium audio brands, and sound just as amazing as any other top audio products on the market. From Snoop Dogg to Mike Tyson, Raycon have become the obsession of countless celebrities, and it's easier to see why, what with their 6 hours of playtime and seamless Bluetooth pairing. Their everyday wireless earbuds come in a range of fun colours and patterns, with a variety of fit options to choose from. Head over to buyraycon.com forward slash masquerade and you'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase. With Raycon's 45 day free return policy, you've really got nothing to lose. So again, that's buyraycon.com forward slash masquerade, or simply click the link in the description below and be a part of the next wave of premium wireless audio. Have you ever found yourself staying up way too late at night, going from one YouTube video to another, telling yourself that beautiful lie of, oh, just one more, then I'll go to bed? Yeah, we've all been there, some of us more times than others but there are some videos on the site which make it a little difficult to go to sleep. Nestled in amongst all those commentary channels, Let's Plays and Gordon Ramsay compilations are some truly strange and, frankly, dark uploads. Some of them are sinister by design, some of them by circumstance, but if you click around on the site long enough, you're bound to stumble into a few. Today we examine four items from that weird side of YouTube, which just might make you want to turn off your devices and go for a long walk outside. I'll actually have to be careful how I talk about this first one, so please excuse any euphemisms. 25-year-old Li Shehua, better known online as Chris Li, is, or perhaps was, a Chinese journalist and content creator with almost 70,000 YouTube subscribers. Prior to making his videos, he worked for CCTV, China's biggest state-run news channel. Now if you know anything about China, it's that freedom of expression isn't high on their to-do list and those who either criticise the government, or otherwise make it look bad, are often silenced. When Chris became disillusioned by the amount of censorship going on at CCTV, he of course decided to quit, and instead began filming his own informative videos, this time documenting the truth and giving his own honest opinions. If you head over to Chris's channel, you'll see that he only has seven videos. The first we'll deal with, let's call it the current global situation, the Big C. They were all uploaded between the 12th and 25th of February, 2020, so just when the severity of the situation was dawning on us all. He filmed these videos at the epicentre of this whole thing, Ground Zero, Wuhan. You all know where. Chris had heard through the grapevine that a prominent lawyer named Cheng Qixi had started blogging about conditions in the city. While reporting there, Chen had mysteriously disappeared, and to this day, hasn't been seen or heard from again. Believing there was some type of cover-up going on, and that Chen had been permanently silenced by the state, Chris travelled into the red zone to uncover the truth. With the help of some locals, he was able to find an apartment in the city, and got himself a vehicle. From there, he began blogging. Chris took his camera to the streets, conducting interviews, visiting hospitals, and exposing the failures of his government to the entire world, and showing how they were intentionally concealing what was going on there. But he was saying too much, showing too much, and it wasn't long before the strong hand of the government came knocking. You don't have to be able to read Mandarin to get the meaning behind Chris's first and only YouTube short. This live video, entitled SOS, is only 30 seconds long, and shows a clearly terrified Chris as he travels down a motorway. He states that moments prior, a white SUV was driving directly at him down the wrong side of the road. 
Apparently, it suddenly swerved in front of his vehicle in an attempt to block his path, and the men inside told him to surrender. He instead hit the accelerator, and the SUV was now following him. Friends, I'm on the road right now, being pursued and chased by state authorities who are in an unmarked van. The only thing I can do right now is make this video. I'm in Wuhan. I'm driving very fast, and they're chasing me. Pray for me. Soon after uploading this, Chris made it back to his apartment and immediately began live streaming. The stream lasted for nearly four hours. The majority of that time, the screen remained black as Chris sat in the dark, lights off, not making a sound, hoping the men chasing him would think he wasn't home. At various points, you can hear them outside, knocking on his door. After hiding in the dark for over three hours, a distressed Chris turns on the lights and addresses his viewers. Oh, I predicted this would most likely happen, but I never knew they'd buy me so quick. I'm not going to try and escape, because there's no use now. I just think it's funny. Before coming to Wuhan, after I resigned from CCTV, I had a long talk with my producer. It feels so unreal. Before, when I turned on the camera to talk, it was for others. Today, I can finally speak my own thoughts. But these own thoughts will probably become my final speech. At the very end of the stream, as Chris's internet connection gets weaker and more patchy, he begins talking to the men outside his apartment, explaining why it's important for a journalist to report the truth and appealing to their decency. He then opens the door. Two men enter the apartment, and the video ends abruptly. For two months after that, Chris was missing. He didn't make any more videos, and his viewers feared the worst. Then, on April 22nd, 2020, after two months of silence, Chris suddenly uploaded a six-minute video, titled, I'm Chris, here is something about me since February 26th. February 26th was the day he disappeared. This video seemed completely out of character. The style of the video was totally different from all of his other uploads, as was his neutral tone. And despite being critical of the CCP in the past, now he was singing their praises and denouncing himself. He said that he was fine, and that he had been treated very well. The whole thing seemed oddly scripted, like Chris was being forced by the state to make this video against his will. He just stands in the center of the screen, in some blank, featureless room, robotically delivering his message. Chris even ended the video with a strange quote from the Book of Documents. The setting, the delivery, everything about this video makes you wonder who's standing just off screen. Since that final video, Chris hasn't uploaded any new content, and hasn't made any posts on his social media accounts either. He simply vanished from the internet. With China's dodgy human rights track record, many have become concerned for Chris's safety and well-being, myself included. Many suspect he's been placed in a re-education camp. Others fear something even worse might have happened to him. But what Chris did was incredibly important. He exposed the truth about the global situation at a time when true reports out of China were hard to come by. He was brave enough to speak out, and I fear he may have paid dearly for that.
If you're into creepy visuals, there's this weird Japanese YouTube channel known as Nugumu. The actual name, which looks like this, is pronounced Wow. This eerie doll figure, who introduces himself as the virtual YouTuber Nugumu, features in nearly every upload, and with the channel having amassed nearly 55,000 subscribers at the time of writing, it's safe to say he definitely caught people's attention, even outside of Japan. In each upload, Nugumu says some pretty unsettling things. How he wants his viewers to send him their eyeballs. How he's standing right behind you. How we're all just meat. Things of that nature. All the while, ominous music plays in the background. The videos that don't feature Nugumu are even more chilling. Konnichiwa. Adding to the eeriness of this whole thing, Nugumu's video titles are all gibberish. He uses obscure and random kanji to make nonsensical sentences. And it's not just Nugumu typing strange things either. If you scroll down into the comments of any of his videos, you're going to come across some weird things. Even if you only speak English, it's clear there's something off about them. The sections are full of people talking about how cute Nugumu is, how handsome he is, how good his bare chest looks, how they want to have babies with him. Yeah, his fan base seems overly dedicated, let's put it like that. They not only leave these amorous comments, they make fan art of him, follow him on social media, and generally just adore him. It's bizarre. So what's going on here? Because of the nature of his uploads, some people suggested that Nugumu's videos were full of coded messages. Others thought that they were a platform for people to meet and order items from the dark web. A place for customers to leave a comment with a specific, innocent word or phrase to confirm their order. Because of the size of Nugumu's following and the dedication of his fans, many believed there was something deeper going on under the surface. If this was just creepiness for the sake of being creepy, the channel wouldn't have grown so large, right? Well, as it turns out, there is a deeper message to the channel, but it's nowhere near as dark as you might expect. Before the Nugumu channel came into existence, a massive wave of Japanese virtual YouTubers started gaining popularity on the site. Most of them featured avatars of cute characters, and the whole thing became a massive trend, with loads of people making these virtual YouTube videos, and even more watching and subscribing to them. This is where Nugumu fits in. His channel kind of stands in opposition to those videos, a sort of anti-VTuber if you will. All of his seemingly obsessed fans? Yeah, they're in on the joke, playing along, and leaving the same type of comments that get left on the typical virtual YouTube accounts. In a way, these dark and seemingly alarming videos are actually quite wholesome. You keep doing you, Nugumu. So this next entry actually comes from a Facebook post. A post about a YouTube ad. One that, supposedly, watches you back. There's no footage to go along with it, just this screenshot, but the text itself paints a very clear and very unsettling picture. So back in 2019, a Facebook user named Raul Navarrete created a post that got shared around and gained a lot of attention. It revolves around an Anuncio Inteligente, or Smart Ad. Now I don't speak Spanish, but two very helpful people in my Discord server do, so big thanks to Isabo and Lavender for translating this into English. Here's Raul's story. Something super weird just happened. I was watching YouTube on my smart TV when, all of a sudden, an ad showed up, as is common on YouTube. I was going to skip, when I noticed this ad was more than five hours long. It surprised me, and I called my dad so he could see the length of the video. I took a picture while I waited for my dad to get there. The girl in the ad kept talking, and by the time my dad got there, she directed her eyes at him. Even my dad joked that she was looking at him. My dad and I stood in front of the TV. 
the girl went quiet, and we felt like she was looking at the both of us. We kept thinking that that was impossible, that she couldn't look at us, since this wasn't a video call. It was an ad on YouTube. It was simply impossible for her to see us. We laughed at how dumb it sounded, and the girl kept speaking. But all of a sudden, she got close to the screen, and we started to feel a little uncomfortable and scared. My dad wanted to test if she was looking at us, so he said Changa a couple of times. Then something incredible happened. The Asian girl said Changa back. In that moment, we got scared, and I looked for the remote to skip the ad. Between my dad and I, we decided we were really tired. It had been a long day, but either way, we couldn't ignore this fact, and we turned off the TV. My doubts are, what the hell happened? Do TVs have cameras? If this is true, then I can see surveillance being possible. And finally, has YouTube been hacked? This thing that happened to my dad and I scared us. If something similar has happened to you, I'd like to know your story. This was mine. So obviously, there isn't any video proof to help legitimize this story, and all we have to go off is Raoul's word that this is true. In fairness, I have seen some crazy ads play on YouTube. Some have legit been over two hours, and I have seen ones that are really unsettling too. A lot of them aren't even trying to sell you anything, so it's pretty obvious to me that YouTube doesn't have the strictest requirements when it comes to advertising on their platform. That being said, unless there was hacking involved, or YouTube was testing some sort of new ad function, I think the girl looking at them was just a pure coincidence. That, or more likely, Raoul just made the whole thing up. I'm almost 100% sure it's not possible to even livestream a commercial, let alone make an ad that's an actual video chat. So as interesting and haunting as this story's concept is, I think it's just that. A story. A good one though. Maura Murray was a 21-year-old nursing student at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. On February 9th, 2004, she disappeared from the face of the earth after getting into a car accident on Route 112. The events leading up to her vanishing are both cryptic and suspicious to say the least, and transform this from an ordinary missing persons case to a truly intriguing, albeit bone-chilling, mystery. Just before leaving her university campus that fateful afternoon, Maura emailed her professors, informing them that she was taking a week off school due to a loss in the family. That was a lie. Nobody in Maura's family had passed on. This got people thinking that maybe Maura was running from something. Or someone. Even before that day, Maura had been acting unusually. Three months before she went missing, Maura had been caught using a stolen credit card to pay for meals at restaurants. Four days prior to vanishing, a university supervisor noticed that Maura had broken down in tears. When they approached her, they said that Maura was just completely zoned out, no reaction at all, totally unresponsive. Two days prior, Maura accidentally smashed her father's car into a guardrail after possibly consuming a few drinks. A few hours before the incident, Maura withdrew $280 from an ATM for unknown reasons. Sometime between 4 and 5 p.m. on the day of her disappearance, she set off in her car. She made no calls to tell anyone about her planned destination. It was sometime after 7 p.m. that Maura crashed her vehicle into a snowbank. The authorities arrived at the scene. Her car's windshield was cracked, the airbags were deployed, but there was no sign of Maura Murray anywhere. Expensive items such as diamond jewelry were found inside the car, along with empty bottles. Maura's AAA card, and a book called Not Without Peril, A Guide to Climbing in the White Mountains. Since that collision, Maura's whereabouts and well-being remain unknown. She simply disappeared from the face of the earth, never to be seen or heard from again. Some believe personal problems got the better of her, and she went missing on her own accord. Others believe that something more nefarious happened to her, that she was chased down by some obsessive stalker, or that she caught a ride with the wrong guy. For the longest time, there were no developments in the case. Then, exactly eight years after Mora vanished, this video, titled Happy Anniversary, was uploaded to YouTube.
That's the whole video. This old guy just stares into the camera, laughing, then gives a knowing wink. The words, happy anniversary, are then plastered over the screen. This happy anniversary video was uploaded on the 8th anniversary of Moramari's disappearance. It was uploaded by a user named 112 Dirtbag. Mora had vanished en route 112, and her father had famously used the word dirtbags to describe whoever had taken her. This was no coincidence. This old man wasn't just making an anniversary video for his wife and then suddenly remembered something really funny. This was intentional. It didn't take long before other users started making these connections. Word started spreading that 112 Dirtback was responsible for whatever happened to Mora Murray, and this video was uploaded to torment her family, laughing at the fact that he'd gotten away with what he'd done. This was brought to the attention of the authorities, and an investigation began. Despite taking the video off the site, the guy behind the channel, a man named Alden Olson, also from Massachusetts, was tracked down and questioned. People thought this was going to be a huge break in the case. In actuality, the whole thing was a hoax. He was just some old codger who'd become enthralled by Moore's disappearance, and wanted to insert himself into it in some way. It was all just a joke. A big, funny joke. <laughs> Good one, Alden. To this day, we still don't know what happened to Mora. I'm inclined to believe that the loss in her family she was talking about was in reference to herself. She then either started a new life somewhere else, or ended the one she already had. Still, even though this dirtbag wasn't responsible for her disappearance, it's completely possible another dirtbag was. We don't have any answers, so all we can do is speculate. And hope for the best. Thank you very much for listening. A big thank you to everyone who supports me here on YouTube and over on Patreon, especially my biggest supporters. Phantom Knight, Hamish K, Yoshi6500, Lydia Glassley, Boise McSnatchy, Amanda Hansen, Jeff the Killer, Tom Brady is Based, Alex Greensaw, Alan Eyre, Azrael Warakai, Charlie Lackey, Connor Lothan, Crawford K. McDonald, Expand Ong, Gina Valera, Grace Archie, Infamous Sempapi, Joshua Perez, Leonardo Martinez, Lord 210, Lucas Maniac, Myra Lancaster, Monica Mendoza, Native Beauty, Peter Logjurech, Philip Westra, Procupidine Natter, Ronnie Franklin, Sarah Ramirez, Sean M. Brenner, Silas Geist, Sloane Crawford, Mrs. Yvonne Rankin, Taylor and Monica Gruenk, The Only Dorita, and Ms. Crypto, thank you guys so much for your continued support. For everyone else, remember to smash that like button or I'll smash you, and you'll be hearing from me again very soon. Stay spooky, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.